the functionality of our game is ready. We can play the game and it works fine. However, there's a lot that we can do to improve the code's quality. And the first thing is the organization of our code. Right now, our program has around 250 lines. So that means that we can start separating things. We can use the separation of concerns principle. And for that, we're going to learn the basics of classes. Classes are at the core of object-oriented programming, which is C-sharp's coding paradigm. And the biggest advantage of using classes and object-oriented programming is the organization, is the ability to separate code into small chunks, which makes everything easy to maintain. It makes it easy for multiple programmers to work on the same code. So it's a paradigm that ultimately makes coding easier. So let's see how we're going to apply that to our game. At the moment, we have everything happening inside one class, the program class, which is the starting point of the application. And we've also used a few classes from the .NET class library, such as console and daytime. But now it's time to start creating our own classes. So let's create our first class. You're going to right click on your project and click on add and choose class, which is the last item. Then we're going to name the class, and in our case will be the menu class. Click on add, and your class is created. And this is the basic template for a class that .NET ships. And there are a few things here that you haven't seen before, if this is your first time working with C-sharp. First, we have our using directives. These directives are very useful for us to write less code, because they allow us to use types without having to type where it comes from. And at the moment, these directives aren't being used, so that's why they're a little bit grayed out. But .NET ships the template with them because they are very commonly used. Then we have a namespace, and that defines a scope that contains a set of related objects. In other words, again, it allows us to organize our code better. And that's especially useful when we start writing bigger applications where we might have different classes with the same name and they're going to be differentiated by the namespace. Then we have the keywords that define our class and that's internal class menu. The first one, internal, is the access modifier and as the name says, it defines where this code can be accessed from. And internal means that this class can be accessed from anywhere within this project. In the beginning of this course, we said that a solution can have multiple projects. So if we create another project within the solution, it won't be able to access this class because it's internal. Whenever we don't declare the access modifier, the class is private by default. And that means that it can only be accessed from within the same namespace. There are a few links in the show notes that dive deeper into using directives and namespaces and how you define a class. And I recommend you read it, but just bear in mind that you might only understand it fully when you use it. As everything else in C-sharp, these come with a mix of theory and practice. So this class will be responsible for the menu, as the name says. So let's grab the menu from the program.cs and bring it to our menu class. So we're going to do a lot of refactoring here to accommodate for our new classes. And then to use that class, we need to instantiate it. So we need to create an object. So I'm declaring a variable that's going to hold that object. And I do that by saying var menu equals new menu. And here we can see our first example of the using directive being used. We have to bring in using my first program so that we don't need to use the namespace to declare a class. Without the using directive, I would have to say var menu equals new my first program dot menu. So we can see how the using directive makes the code cleaner. But now we have an error. The compiler is complaining that it can't find anything called menu that has a string as a parameter. So we need to call the menu method by saying menu.menu, .menu, which is the method that's inside the class. However, the code completion feature of Visual Studio would show that method if it was available. And at the moment, we can't see it. And that's because this method doesn't have an explicit access modifier which means that by default, it's private. So it can't be accessed from anywhere outside this namespace. So let's say that this method is also internal. So everything that's inside the class is considered 
a member of that class. So a method is nothing more than one of these members. And we can define these members with various levels of access. And we are saying that this method can be seen from anywhere within this project. I'm just going to change the name of this method to show menu instead of menu because I don't want to have to call menu.menu. .menu. That's not very informative. So once we do that, we can see that the show menu method now is showing in the code completion tool amongst the available options. And that's the first option. And here I've decided that I'm going to pass the name and the date into this method from the program.cs. So I have to change the signature of the method to accept those parameters. Now, of course, by moving this method outside of the program.cs, it breaks everything. Since all the methods that were called from within that code block are still in the program.cs. So they can't be automatically found from here. So the next step will be to create a new class. So again, let's repeat the process. Click on add, choose class and pick a name. And the name of our class will be game engine because that's the class that will handle our games. And then we're going to grab all those methods that handle the games and copy them into the game engine class. And at the moment, by default, these methods are also private. So we need to add the internal keyword so they can be accessed from other namespaces. So let's do that with all the methods. And let's also delete the using directives that are not being used. We always want to leave in our code only the things that we are actually using, which makes our code more readable. So I'm doing the same in the menu class. And the next step is to create an instance of the game engine class in the menu class. And this time, instead of using a var, I'm going to declare this variable explicitly. So I'm going to say game engine equals new. And then I can access that object and call its methods wherever I need. So I'm doing that for each method in our game. Back to the program class, the compiler is complaining that I don't have this semicolon after the show menu method. So I just fix that. And then let's create our third class. This one will be called helpers. And these are classes that are very common amongst developers. And they hold methods that are going to help you do something else in your code. So instead of repeating that code every time you need it, all you have to do is call that method, which again makes your code more clean and organized. So let's copy the get games, add to history, and get division numbers methods and paste them into the helpers class. Again, add in the internal keyword so that they don't remain private. And one more time, let's get rid of the unused directives. And helper methods commonly use an optional keyword, static. And when we use that keyword, that means that we don't need to instantiate the object to use that method. We can directly call it. And I'll also have links to more material about the static keyword. And there's a lot of debate about when to use it and even if you should use it. But in my opinion, that's one more of those things that you need to know how it works, but its use will depend on the personal preference of the developer or the organization that you work for. So the best way to learn is to use it. So let's see the helper methods in action. We are simply going to call the methods from the helpers class without instantiating it, starting by the get division numbers. And the compiler is still showing an error. And that's because I had forgotten to add static to that method. Then, Let's do the same with the add to history method. Let's make it static. And then let's call it from the game engine class. And we can see the method available in the auto completion tool, even though the class hasn't been instantiated. And we need to do that in all the games since they all use add to history. And to finalize, let's do the same with the get games method, just calling it directly from the menu without instantiating the class. And back inside the helpers class, we have the games list. And at the moment, this list lives in the program class. 
So we need to bring that list into the helpers class. And for that, we're going to use a field. A field is a variable that's declared directly inside a class and not inside a method. And there's also a lot of debate about fields, but it's common practice to use fields for private variables. And the other advantage of fields is that they can be used by all the methods in that class because the scope of that field is the class, not a single method. And why is that helpful? To make our code clean. So as you can see, classes didn't do anything magical. They didn't add any functionality to our program. We just did a bunch of refactoring. The code is doing the same thing that it did before but it's way more organized now. And the code for this program only had about 250 lines. Now, if you think of bigger applications that have thousands, tens of thousands, or even millions of lines of code, object-oriented programming is not only necessary, but vital. Now, of course, let's test everything to make sure it still works. And I get a no reference error. And that's because I didn't initialize my list. So let's initialize the games list as empty using new in parentheses. And let's test the program again. And the game works and the history also works. And that was your introduction to classes and object oriented programming. And that is a huge topic. So there's some material in the show notes so you can go deeper into objects. But keep in mind that there's a lot to that subject. So if you don't get everything straight away, don't feel frustrated. It can get very complex. And I've been doing this for many years and there are still aspects of object-oriented programming that I don't fully understand. But of course, feel free to reach out and ask questions.